we got a one, a two, a three, and as always, in the middle of the afternoon, on a Friday afternoon, a uh, subdued, hey now, Metal Mike coming at ya. Uh, as you know, if you watch any of my videos, you've seen the videos that I put up this week. Um, I put up, I think, three or four, maybe even five videos about the property over on Rice Street in St. Paul, 842 Rice Street, a historic old hotel uh, that was a bar in the 1940s, 50s, maybe early 60s at the very least, and then from the 60s all the way up until I was there yesterday, it had been a furniture store called Karen Fabre, uh, a very elite, high-end, decorative uh, furniture collectible store. As far you could get the most plush, elaborate, over-the-top, mid-century items there in its prime when that stuff reigned supreme. Uh, that building in those pictures, each and every single room, all three floors, I guess maybe four including the basement, let's count four, yeah, four floors total, was all completely packed with high-end furniture, high-end wall displays, uh, curtains, uh, fabrics, porcelain, glassware, china hutches. It was amazing. It was the most beautiful shop in the 1970s. I remember walking past it driving past it with my parents. Uh, I grew up not even a few blocks from there, so even as a young boy we would go in there and disappear into all the furniture. You had to ring a buzzer to get in. So I think I've kind of touched on a lot of that before in prior videos about it, but what I wanted to specifically touch on was a lot of the questions that I was receiving after I posted those videos. Let's start our, off with the most uh, uh, important one to me that I want to hit and address first off. Though I've already addressed it, I guess, in the, uh, in the question and answers. I'm going to go ahead and address it here on video for you today, unscripted as well. The question was, all that work for nothing to pull that metal screen down, to pull out an old window? Ugh. It, it, as if uh, just pissing on it. And that's okay. You know, not all of us are going to collect or save or uh, repurpose all of the same things. Some of us that watch me are, uh, uh, some of us, some of you that watch me are collectors, some are dealers, uh, some are hoarders, some are scrappers, some are all across the board. And I think that's what I've always tried to do in my videos is uh, put forth that message that that's what I am. I am all across the board. I'm all of those things. I'm a collector. I'm a picker, I'm a dumpster diver, I'm a scrapper at times if it's something really cool, uh, architectural, you name it, repurpose even. Mainly is I love high-end antiques. Who doesn't? But let's, let's break this down for you because I really want to address this. You know, a lot of uh, guys are going to watch those videos and go, you know, he, the, the question is correct. What the hell are you doing? pulling down simply pieces of wood and uh, an old me uh, metal screen over a window and some old wavy glass in the, in the frame that's cracked and broken and broke before I got it home anyway. Okay, let's go all the way back about four years ago. I got in that building and I hauled out two large vanfuls. At the time I was driving the old Dodge vans. If you've, if my old Dodge van, a 1988 Dodge van, go deep back into my videos and you'll see it. It was a monster of a beast and I've loaded it to the hilt and I may even have video of it loaded because I did film the last time that I was in there and I pulled out all those old treasures. Now most of it was all mid-century artwork etc and I, I hauled that all away for free. Now the whole purpose of me getting in that building is I dropped off my flyer a couple of weeks ago and, uh, let's, and now we're going to kind of cross over to another question. Someone had asked me, well, gosh, I'm surprised the owner would let pickers in there, you know, with safety concerns, obviously, with liability, etc. Um, I had put my flyer in a couple weeks ago with the crew that was working there because I've been monitoring that building since I had been in there the last time, three or four years ago, because there was still a lot of stuff in there. And I thought, you know what, I probably missed something. I'd like to get in there one final time, and I tried by calling the realtors. I tried every way I could get in there. When I finally seen the crew in there a couple weeks ago, being I've been stalking that building every time I go down Rice Street, I take a look. I keep an eye on it to see if there was a dumpster out there, etc. And that's what you can do as a picker, junker, scrapper, dumpster diver, whatever the hell you're going to call yourself, or wherever you fall into what category. Uh, 
you basically know your route, you know your area where you pick, etc. So you're watching for these old houses, you should be anyway, no matter where you fall on that scale. Because just being aware of your surroundings as a picker and as a collector can hugely pay off. Uh, knowing that a little old lady lives on that corner house, always keep your eye on it. Then all of a sudden she's not there anymore. More so of a reason to keep your eye on it. Is there a for sale sign in front of the building? Another reason to step up keeping your eye on it because now you're watching for a dumpster. You're trying to catch a crew in there. You're trying to catch the family in there. You're trying to catch anyone on the property that you can touch base with. Give them a calling card, business flyer, or just simply verbally talk to them face to face and explain your situation that you're a picker and that you'd be surprised. Because a lot of the times you're going to get told off, well, there's nothing in here. It's all trash. Well, let me look. Let me walk through there because if anything, I'm going to save you some space for the dumpster and I'm going to give you a little cash if I find anything. I have an eye like an eagle and if it's there, I'm going to find it. So I left the flyer, I got in there, I talked to the owner, I uh, went there on Monday, picked a small pile of stuff, went back on the Tuesday and I gave him a hundred bucks for that pile. Uh, that probably paid off into a lot as to why he would let me go in there the following because then I called him when I got home and I said shit you know a lot of that old wood and stuff in that pocket door that I couldn't get out I wanted to go back there and try to retrieve it the pocket door long gone now I don't know if another picker got that an architectural guy got it or if it went right into the dumpster I didn't check the dumpster but when I was in there yesterday I was getting wood getting the metal screen getting the old window and that was really the final uh, pick now, for me, nostalgia plays a huge part of it. Having grown up in St. Paul on Rice Street and having frequented that uh, building as a young boy and knowing its history, even knowing the old little lady that worked there. Um, so there's a pull there for me. I wanted to save some of the wood because I repurpose it. How do I do that? I've got a little uh, shed that I've built out in the back, all from repurposed old wood that I have found. Uh, I just love old wood and some of that wood in there is 100 plus years old. It's dirty, it's dusty, my kind of wood. And so I'm going to build something with it. With that old window, I'll frame around it and I will put that metal screen up over it and it's really going to look sharp when I'm all done. You'll see it eventually on this video. I'll get it done this summer. I'm sure I'm going to do something with that wood. And I might even sell a little bit of it. You never know. So that is my reasoning behind grabbing wood and uh, an old window and all that work. And another thing I want to touch on, that does not work for me. That is the nature of the beast. That is what I do. Since I was a young boy, I've been going in and out of these old houses, pulling things out, saving junk, climbing in and out of dumpsters, going to estate sales. I've done it all. Worked at an auction house as a young boy, worked at my dad's comic book store as a young boy, gone to the flea markets as a young boy, over carried it over into old age manhood at 48 years old. I freaking love it all. Every aspect. I'm a little bit of each. And so for me to get in there and save that wood, that's not hard work. If anything, I, I look at it as a workout. It keeps me on my toes. You have to go through... Uh, uh, the motions of it. It's what I do is I hunt. Now the whole time that I'm tearing wood out, I'm tearing windows out, I'm also scanning like an eagle to see if I missed anything. Now of course I didn't. I got some old wood out of there. But that's what it had come down to at that point. That was the last pick of probably in total, I would bet you I picked that building, hell I'd say six times that I've been in there over the past five years and most of it this, this week is when I went back uh, three times this week I hit it. Boom, boom, so I wanted to save anything I could. And I'm telling you, sometimes behind an old window you will find an old sign. You never know. You have to put that work in. And I can't tell you how many times I've been in estates where I thought I had everything and all of a sudden you can uncover something under an old rug, under an old piece of drywall, you name it. Now that didn't happen yesterday, but I just got some old wood. And we're going to keep it at that. And I'm happy with that. It keeps me on my game. Even something as simple as organizing my hoard, my collection, um, out in the cabin there, cabin, shed, all that stuff uh, that I save outside is old farm work and stuff that can stay safe out there if it gets wet. But every summer I pull that out and spread it out over the whole backyard. Now that's a hell of a task, but I can get it done in an hour to two hours. And what that does is it really helps me uh, because it keeps me on my toes because you have to bust your ass when when you're working I am I am I want to get it spread out on the ground get it loaded back up organized throw anything out I can 
and uh, just keeping me going so that when I do get in the next estate, that is, there's better treasures there. I'm not burning out when I'm climbing over a horde trying to get back into the back corner and I've got to dig down three feet to the ground and then fill in behind me going through a house. So getting out there, ripping parts stuff, doing a demo and pulling some old window and an old, some old wood out, man, I love it. I freaking love it. I'm on my own clock. I'm in there doing what I love in an old building. That is, to me, hog heaven. And, uh, yeah, you kind of are even, uh, like I said, nostalgic. I'm kind of holding on I'm to the building because I know that's going to be the last time I'm in there. And, yeah, I'm grabbing things maybe I shouldn't, but that's the nature of the beast, man. And I know that I can use that wood. I've got a lot of wood. I didn't really show you the pile I got at the end of it, but I've got a good, nice pile of old wood, all the same sizes. So I can either build a tree fort for the kids with it, or I'm going to build an extension onto my little uh, storage cabin shed that I've got out back. So, I think I've covered it. Uh, so that pick was really a long pick that went over five years. And uh, what you were seeing this week was the tail end of it, the not-so-glamorous part of it. Most of the good stuff is gone. But, I tell you what, when I was in there Monday and when I found that little uh, drinking fountain, that's a huge freaking pop. That is a nice pop, and that is going to go amazing on eBay. So I pulled out some treasures this week. Uh, I purposely went there yesterday just to get wood and to see what else would maybe be uncovered when they were knocking the, the, uh, the door frames down and the walls down and, and the dust and the dirt. And I will continue to do that. That is my passion. Walking through an old abandoned house with nothing in it, I'm still looking. I'm still hunting. And I'm probably going to pull out a piece of old wood trim. So that's it, Metal Mike. Hopefully I've answered some of the questions. Remember, we can't always find mint tonkas. We can't always find mint boom boxes. For me, that ain't what it's about. Of course, I want a mint tonka and I want a mint boom box, but if that's not there, that hundred year old piece of wood is also something that I want. And that's why I think that uh, I can appeal to so many different levels of collectors, pickers, from the high end to what some people will call a bottom feeder. And I've been called every freaking name in the book. I've been called a bottom uh, feeder, which is uh, actually a condescending, disrespectful comment that a lot of the high-end dealers call the guys on the bottom. But those guys on the bottom are what keep the guys on the top going. So don't shit on anyone. You know, no one's better than anybody else. The guy that gets the old piece of wood compared to the guy that gets the mint condition tonka. Whatever their floats their boat, that's what it's all about. It's about passion. It's about getting out there and doing what you love to do. If you love the tonka, go out and freaking find it. If you want the wood, find it. It is all out there. And that's what I try to encompass in my videos. And hopefully that word even makes sense. I don't even know the proper definition of encompass, but I think that I can use it in that sentence. But that's what it's all about. A passion for what you do. Getting dirty, digging in an old house. That's my passion, man. And I will uncover an old whiskey bottle with as much passion as I will a brand new tonka truck that I found in the attic. Both are awesome. One pays a little bit more than the other. That's reality. But that's not what it's all about for me is money. Um, which is kind of, I contradict myself at times because obviously money is what keeps you going. Everyone needs money. Everyone wants to make money. There's no doubt. But when you're in this position and you're comfortable with what you're doing and you do what you love, man, don't become too snobbish. That can be your downfall. As my dad used to tell me, my stepfather, I used to sit and talk to him all the time and say, man, it's getting tough out there. There's so many freaking pickers. There's so many knowledgeable guys out there. How can I compete, especially with the new flood of it, with technology, with the American pickers, all the TV shows, etc., guys that are doing videos like me. There's so much knowledge out there now. How can a guy compete with that, compete with a guy that's got a huge wallet, to a guy that has zero in his wallet. Well, the more you know across the board, the better. Most guys tend to focus, women included, obviously, guys just, I'm just so we're grouping us all together here, pickers of uh, every type, but most of them are specifically only looking for one type of item, be it milk glass, old tankas, boom boxes, record albums, and what they do is they close all the other windows in the house. That's a bad deal. You want to learn more, you want to go outside the box as much as possible, and the more you know about as many different uh, 
parts of collecting, dealing, selling, etc., the better for you, the more knowledgeable you are. So, all I can say is this. Get out there. Freaking find it. If it's a Tonka, find it. If it's an old building, find it. But we can't always have that treasure that we're after. So sometimes we have to still stay productive. We still have to go through the motions. We still have to be the bird that's trying to get that early worm. And there's only one way you can do that. And that's get up every day and keep banging. Not every day is going to be a diamond at the end. But if you continue every day, eventually those diamonds will come to you. I used to feel that way when I used to drive the alleys a lot. I would drive the alleys back in the day literally seven days a week. I'm not bullshitting you. I would load up the two little kids and we would go for a ride and I would find stuff. And sometimes I wouldn't find nothing for two weeks. I'd go down one alley and there'd be nothing. The very next day I'd go down that same alley by just putting in the work, putting in the time, putting in the energy and suddenly there was a treasure. So don't get defeated. Don't believe everyone out there that it's not out there because it is all out there. It can all be found. Get out there. Find it. I'm locked down today. I'm on baby duty, kid duty, whatever you want to call it. I'm in the house. You, If you are not and you can get out there, just go drive around. Do something. Go find it. Hey now, Metal Mike. Always junking. Always in an old building. Always ripping down some drywall. And always finding some old light bulbs. Spitting as I talk because of the passion. So I hope you have the passion. And let's just all stay above ground. Let's keep doing what we do. And let's keep hunting. Metal Mike, hey now, and Suicidal Tendencies Rule. I seen them with Megadeth uh, last Saturday. It was freaking phenomenal. Dave Lombardo from Slayer played drums for Suicidal. It was so sick. I had uh, all access, so I got to stand right next to the stage. And holy shit, the house got brought down. If you don't have the new Megadeth album, go get it. It is freaking awesome. And if you haven't listened to Suicidal Tendencies in a while, you better go pick that stuff up too. Because Mike Murr and Suicidal, they are bringing it. That is called passion. No matter where it is in life, whatever you fall in, or whether you're a skateboarder, I'm stealing Mike Murr's lines from Suicidal Tendencies because he gave this speech at the show. If you're a skateboarder, whatever it is, keep banging, keep getting up. Keep getting hit, keep getting up, keep hunting, keep going. Because another day is a blessing. Hey now! Oh, Hulk smash!